Hey everyone. Hey guys, welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. So we are talking about permission today and we want to talk about the importance of permission when it comes to your movement practice. And um, I think it's a very important topic and subject to discuss. And the reason why is because essentially permission is necessary and it is required. And the reason it is necessary and the reason it is required is because in order to really come into a space of full presence, in order to really come and, and fully tap in with your body, with your spirit, right? With your sense of femininity, with your source of sensuality, you have to give yourself permission. It starts with permission. And so in a live class, when, 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 when the women filter in and everybody comes in, especially if it's your first class and you take your seat around this room and you know there's other women in the room and everybody's here for a different reason. Everybody showed up to the class, to the mat for a different reason. But essentially, we're all going to get something from it when we allow ourselves to surrender to the process. I do not think that pole dancing central movement is like a one-time class. I don't think that it's something that you go to once or you do once and you're like, oh, okay, knocked it out, master that. It's literally a lifestyle practice. It is an ongoing, continuous practice of movement. It's like yoga. It's like working out, it's like Tai Chi, it's like sports. It's literally like any practice that you do that you maintain for whatever the specific reason is. And in this case, in my case, for example, I maintain a consistent practice of sensual movement because it is valuable to my mental health, because it connects me to my body, right? Because it, it brings me into a space of presence, because it slows me down. And so what we find is that that is the case for a lot of us. Um, we're so, so, so busy, and I say this a lot, but the reality of a woman's life in modern day society, we are super busy, whether you are a mother, whether you are corporate, whether you have a job, whether you are going to school, there's just a multitude of things that we do and that we essentially take care of and that we stretch ourselves and sometimes way too fucking thin for. And so what this practice does is brings you into a place and space where you can fully embody and be in your own energy and then express it however you want to. So one thing that I hate is choreography. I've never been a choreography girl. I've never even really been good at choreography to be perfectly honest. Um, I was a dancer in school. I did a couple years of ballet. I've taken jazz. I was a drill team girl. I did gymnastics. So movement has always been like a fairly important part of my life. But choreography was never my get down. And don't you fucking dare put me up in a hip hop class and expect me to be able to keep up. Like I'm the non-dancing, non-rhythmic. I can't catch the choreography. So I'm not going to go to the class type of girl. And so what I really appreciate about sensual movement and what I really appreciate about the way that we practice sensual movement in the sensual movement lab and here in the V studio is this ability to be completely intuitive in how you move, right? To allow your physical body to be nothing more than a moving expression of what it's filtering from the inside. How are you feeling? when we tap in. What does it mean? What are we what are we tapping into, right? When we say tap in, what even are we tapping into? You're tapping into this innate nature of yourself. And essentially you're tapping into your feeling space. How am I feeling today? It's a checking in and then a physical expression and releasing of energy outward. And that doesn't look the same for everybody, right? Because the way that I express my movement may not be the same as you express your movement and the way that I'm feeling today may cause me to express my movement in a completely different way than you are expressing your movement, right? So intuitive movement is all about freely speaking the language. And so I know I have shared this before um, 
I'm sure you've heard this before, but if you haven't, and if you're new here, and if you're new to all of this, sensual movement is a language. And that's why you can look at different dancers, different pole dancers, different sensual yogis, and different movers, and you see sort of different elements and different styles of how they practice their movement. It's a language. And so once you learn the foundational alphabet, or in other words, the asanas, if you're a yogi, the moves, if you're a dancer, once you learn these very basic concepts, you can soak into your central movement however you want to. Choreography is to help those that really like need a guide to follow. And I'm not knocking choreography, okay? I've taught pole dance central movement for a very long time. It's been 15 years. Um, and that being said, I've taught a lot of choreography pieces and they're very essential to getting people to break out of their shell. It's really important to, to, of course, also helping people to understand the language. But what really gets you into the language is complete and utter repetition. Repetition, 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 replicating a single movement over and over and over and over and over again until it becomes a second language in your body. Sensual movement for me is literally a language in my body. I am fluent at speaking the language of sensual movement. I can put on any song, I can be in any outfit, I can be anywhere, in any surrounding, with any prop, and my sensual movement exists. It doesn't stop because I don't have a pole. It doesn't stop or not exist because I don't have a chair. It doesn't stop because there's no floor, no wall. Like all of these things are literally props that just assist in like the fun of being able to, to tap in. So let me give you an example, right? For example, hip circling is something that we consistently do in central movement, right? Hip circling is how we move energy through. We hip circle because one, we stabilize the pelvic floor with hip circling. Two, we are aiding in lower back pain. And three, we are literally moving out stagnant energy. Um, our hips, okay, are the seat of our emotions. This pelvic bowl is the center, the core center, and the sacral energy is all about our expression, our creativity, our sexuality, right? Our ability to move and create in the world. And so stiffness here means that there's probably some sort of a blockage in what's been, and it could be a blockage in your sexual confidence. It could be a blockage in your sensual energy. It could be a, a blockage in your expression in the world, right? It could be a blockage in your femininity. And so we move through that when we do hip circles. Hip circling is like a vowel <laughs> of sensual movement. If, if when you're, I have a, a first grader and we are teaching her to read um, and it is been a little bit more challenging than it has with some of my other children because everybody's different and everybody does at their own pace but one of the most important things when you're teaching how to read is of course you teach the vowels and you teach the sounds and then you teach letters and then you teach consonants and then you you know you you comprise all of these things which essentially begin to flow together to make the sentence or the word or whatever it is that you're reading off the page and so it's exactly the same with your movement we learn our vowels or like our key important components of movement um, which essentially our breath slow movement and then we have the actual asanas or stretches or specific movements that we do so the first thing we would do is we would tap in with the breath right we would tap in by slowing down the breath coming into the body and really getting into this place where we are calm right where everything is sort of melting off and then maybe we'll drop our head down and we'll slowly roll that into a head circle and then the next key component here is observation right we're body scanning we're checking in we're asking ourselves as we're moving through this movement what is it feeling like in my neck where might I feel tension? Where does it feel really good? Where does it feel like I can use more support, right? And that becomes your head circle. Your hip roll, once you know it, you come up high and we can circle the hips around, right? We can open the legs and we can circle the hips around, right? And so say you're flowing in your hip circle and for you, 
your next intuitive move by your body might be to drop one hand back and come into a body wave, right? But my intuitive flow from this, my body might be saying, oh, this feels really good, but oh, my lower back, it feels much better if I forward fold and come down. And come down, right? So much different. And then we would continue to flow with our movement, right? Maybe a chest circle. And then maybe we'll take a mermaid and we'll come into a little seated position over here. And so maybe for you that says, sweep those feet around to the front, but maybe for me it says, ooh, sweep them to the back, right? <laughs> so your intuitive movement is so important, but the most important thing is learning the language. And more so than that, it's about repetition. And more so than that, it flows back into giving yourself permission. Giving yourself permission to show up without judging yourself. Giving yourself permission to show up without having to have the choreography correct. Without having to think about what movement comes next. Without having to wonder if you look right or if you're holding this position correctly. This is all about what feels good in your body and allowing yourself and again giving yourself the permission to say it is okay for me to feel good in my body. It is okay for me to move in my body. It is okay for me to fuck up the choreography. It's okay for me to go that way when everybody else is going this way. It's okay. It starts with permission. Literally starts with permission. Giving yourself permission to sign up for the class. Giving yourself permission to show up on the mat. Giving yourself permission to say, I'm here and I'm ready to do whatever it is that is needed for me, whatever it is that's going to move me, right? And then you allow yourself to flow into that movement. So I want to wish everybody a happy sensual Saturday. Uh, sensual September is coming to a close. I hope that everybody has been enjoying their stop motion photos and capturing those. I think that that is a series that I want to continue here in the V Studio, is this idea of stop motion captures where one song, one dance or movement, and it doesn't even have to be a dance, you guys. You can literally sit and just be deep into your movement connecting and then we go through and we play back right and this is playback without judgment we're not in playback to say ew look at how i look right there oh my gosh i can't believe i did it. we're playing back to capture these moments when we are in our pure raw unfiltered unapologetic essence and then creating the captures because I want you to find beauty in yourself and I want you to see the art in your body and I want you to see the beauty in your femininity and I want you to see the beauty in your movement. So thank you guys so much for being here for this. Um, I really just wanted to turn the camera on and just share really quickly. Um, I feel like I kind of bounced around and went a little bit off topic, but essentially I hope that it was all valuable or meaningful to you in some kind of a way. We are giving ourselves permission under this Libra new moon, permission to accept all that is coming to us. Happy new moon. Um, and I will be back with a new moon uh, movement meditation for you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your Saturday and I will see you guys in the next one.